This is Pastor James Ledbetter from International Ministry. You can visit our website at www.internationalministry.org. There you'll find ministry stuff like sermons and videos. Also, be sure to check out our ministry store. The link will be in the description, and you can also find a link on our website. There you'll find all of your Jesus t-shirts, your pillows, anything that has to do with Christianity. Buy one for the entire family. Because I assure you, each and every purchase goes towards the ministry for mission trips and, and equipment for putting out videos and, and audio sermons. So please, just check it out. And if you like what you see, buy a couple shirts for the entire family. Hallelujah. Now, let's get to the sermon. Amen. Good evening, beloved. Today I want to talk about something that has a lot of people questioning what's really going on in the world. As I do my news website, which is uh, www.mynewsguru.com, you'll see that the world is in chaos. See, I got revelation the other day that Jesus is separating the sheep from the goats. And he said he would do that. But he directed me to Matthew chapter 24. And starting at verse 3, the disciples asked Jesus the very thing that we're all asking. And at starting at verse 3, it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you. For, verse 4 is very important. Take heed that no man deceive you. Because there's a lot of people on the earth that don't know the Bible. Yet they quote the Bible and they misinterpret what the Bible says. So they're teaching people their interpretation of the Bible. And that's not what Jesus meant. So uh, be careful that no man deceive you or woman. Because there's a lot of women out there that are trying to deceive. Just like the other day, some, some girl that calls herself a prophet of God claimed that the Bible specifically says that Satan is a female. I rebuked that evil Jezebel spirit quickly and moved on. So starting at chapter five or verse five, Matthew 24 verse five. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. That goes along also with many will come in his name calling themselves Christians and deceive many. There's a lot of people these days that are calling themselves Christians and don't live the Christian life. Don't do what Jesus commanded them to do. And they have no understanding of the Bible whatsoever. They have no discernment. Verse 6. And ye shall hear of war and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. See, we're living in these days where uh, America's threatening to go to war with North Korea, China threatening to go to war with America, Russia threatening to go to war with America. All these, all these countries are threatening to go to war. And uh, we're right there, actually. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Now that, my, my friends, is, is another thing that's going on. We have pestilence and famines going on all over the world. We have famines going on, actually, in Africa again. Uh, as you recall, it got a little better. Now 
the famines are coming back and the pestilences are coming back. And there's so many diseases in America these days, like uh, the plague has come back. Uh, I believe it's in Arizona. Uh, places in Arizona, I believe it is. Verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Think about that for a minute. How many times when you bring up the name Jesus do people actually hate you because you said the name Jesus? We're in those days, beloved. And it very soon Jesus is coming back. Now verse 10 starts, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another. Offended. There's so many, there's so much going on that church is taking crosses down off of the churches because they're offending Muslims. Or churches are stopping to preach against homosexuality or adultery or fornication. They refuse to preach on hell and repentance because they're offended the homosexuals and all the people that choose to live that way. So many will be offended. And... shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Verse 11, and many false prophets shall rise, then shall deceive many. There's another one. I'm not going to mention any names, but before Trump was elected, there were, there were three groups of people. One group was saying that Trump was going to be elected. The second group of people that said Trump will never be elected and God specifically told them that Hillary would be elected. The third group of people were talking about Obama's going to do his third term, that neither one of them will be elected. Now, God told me back then, he said, this is what's going to show everybody who the prophets are and who the false prophets are. God used this election to show you who the false prophets are. So if anybody was saying Hillary won, was going to win, they're a false prophet. If anybody said Obama was going to do his third term, they're a false prophet. Don't listen to none of those people. And also be careful of the ones that, that say Trump is going to win because uh, a prophet can be right or a false prophet can be right some of the time. Now, verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. See, we're in a process of being saved. And because, uh, because iniquity abounds, the, uh, Many shall wax cold. The love of many. In America, you have people hating Trump supporters. You have Trump supporters hating the Democrats and the liberals. Why? Because the love, the iniquity is abounding. And you have Antifa. Antifa. They call themselves anti-fascists, but interesting enough, Winston Churchill said, uh, back in his uh, days, he he said that the fascists will be called anti-fascist in the future, and that future is now. And I'm actually I was actually surprised to find that Winston Churchill quote because he named it exactly like it was going to be. You have anti uh, antifa. They call themselves anti-fascist, but their beliefs are fascist. If you believe anything other than what they believe, they want to violently hurt you. They want to bring sticks on you. They want to hit you. They want to cause violence on you. They want to ban your books. They want to ban the Bible. They want all of these things to happen, which makes them fascist which makes them fascist. 
but they call themselves anti-fascist. You know, I mean, Winston Churchill called it right. 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So basically, when the gospel is preached to everybody in the world, everybody's had a chance that's living now, has had a chance to accept or reject Jesus. The very last person that hears that gospel and makes a choice, that's when the end's gonna come. That's basically what Jesus is saying. And we're close to that point. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Jesus made that a point. Who, who is this person? The abomination of desolation would be the Antichrist standing in the most holy place. The most holy place. You have people thinking that Obama standing in the place of uh, the uh, place of Jesus' birth was the abomination of desolation. Obviously, that wasn't it because the end hasn't come. The end is here, but the end hasn't come. We're past the beginning of sorrows, actually. And uh, verse uh, 16, Then let them which be in Judah flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field re return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them which are with child, and them which that give suck in those days. But pray that ye, that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not seen the beginning of the world to this time. No, not ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, there is the Christ, or there, believe him not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, Underline that part in your Bible. If it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. If it were possible. It's not possible. And also, basically what Jesus is saying is only God knows when he's, com when he's coming back. So the thing is, is you have all these people saying, well, God gave them special revelation. Don't believe that. Don't believe that. God does not contradict his word. The only person that knows is God himself. He knows the exact date and time. Nobody else. He doesn't give special revelation on the date and time that he's coming back. I don't care who they are. Nobody knows the exact day and time. We can see the season. And we know that the season's approaching. We know that we're close. Because of what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 is pretty much all in red. So you know Jesus said all of that. So Jesus told us when to expect the end. So you have all these people not wanting to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear anything about the end or the signs or anything. Jesus said, be sure you watch. Watch for these signs. Know. Know when the end is here. Know when the end is coming. Know. Know exactly when. Because we're in those days. We're in the days that Jesus said that the end shall come. So we're very close. The answer to the question from the beginning of this video is we're very close. We're extremely close, beloved. 
So, shimmy, shimmy, and shimmy. also in uh, Matthew yeah. chapter 24, he says, uh, let, let your heart not be troubled. For these things have to come before the end comes. So don't be worried. If you're a child of God, and you know that you're a child of God, and you've repented of your sins, and you're living your life according to the way Jesus said to live, then you know that these signs mean that Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back soon, beloved. So be ready, be alert, be vigilant, and keep your eyes and ears open because you can see the signs and the evil. Like I said before, Jesus is separating the sheep from the goat. He's doing that now. And you can see because the godly has gotten more godly and the evil people have gotten more evil. So the goats are on one side and the sheep are on the other side. The reward and the eternal life reward goes to the sheep. But the goats, they're all going into the lake of fire. So make sure you're one of the sheep. Make sure you're one of the ones that's written in the book of life. Make sure that you ask Jesus to show you your error so that you can repent. I thank you all for listening, beloved. And this has been a special report from Pastor James Ledbetter. And I thank you all for listening. And I pray that you all have a blessed, blessed day. All right, beloved. It's time for the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me and believe in your heart that what Jesus says is true. Hebrews 6.18 says it's impossible for God to lie. And he said, he who asketh receiveth. And we're today we're going to ask Jesus to save you. In the name of Jesus, repeat after me. Father God in heaven, I come to you today a sinner. I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to save me from my sins. Come into my heart. I believe everything you said. I believe all of your words. I come to you, Lord, in repentance. Wash me clean. Make me free. Because your word says, who Jesus sets free is free indeed. I believe those words. And I believe you're saving me today, Lord. I ask for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Today, a fresh outpouring of the anointing that you give all believers. I want to join you in heaven. I want to repent of my sins. I want you to save me, Lord. Show me where I need to repent. Show me where I need to change. I believe you, Lord, and I thank you in advance. In the name of Jesus, I speak things that aren't as if though they already were. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you said that prayer, you're on your way to being saved. Believe everything Jesus says. Every word that's in the Bible is true. And if you said that prayer, and you know that you know that you know that it's true, today you've started your path on the right path, on the narrow way. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Hallelujah.